Hello, I'm David DeCosmo. Welcome to ECTV Live. My uh, co-host, West Defender, is on leave right now, but I'm happy to tell you of a great show today, uh, one that I always get excited about because it's an event that's really fairly new to our area, but it's growing, and it's particularly important, I think, this year. We'll, we'll explain why. Uh, Kristen Bogash is my guest, and Kristen is involved with what we call World War II Days in Berwick. Now, Columbia County, um, you might wonder why Columbia County, why Berwick would you reminisce about, would you reenact uh, scenes from World War II? And Kristen, go back just a couple years as to when this started. This isn't a, a 10 or 15 year old event. No, this is actually our fourth year for Berwick World War II weekend, and the entire reason why the event started was actually because, um, I'll take a step back even further, 2013, um, there was a weekend with Stewie event celebrating the bicentennial in Columbia County. Um, so they had brought, the Stuart Tank um, committee at the time had brought a Stuart tank into the area to be a part of the parade that and was going on. And those tanks were actually produced in Berwick. Yeah, so they brought in um, a Stuart tank. It was one of the 15,224 that were made right in the Berwick ACF factory. Um, so that was just kind of like a celebration of Columbia County heritage. And from there, it's kind of where the Stuart Tank Committee got their wheels turning, and they decided that they really, really wanted to bring back a Stuart Tank, bring it back to Berwick, um, where it was actually created. Um, so what ended up happening was around 2015, um, the Stuart Tank Association it became a nonprofit. Um, we were able to bring a Stuart tank back to Berwick from England. It was found in England. I was going to um, say you don't you don't go to the the you know the local uh, Army Navy store and pick no, up a it's, Stuart No, it's tank. not just something that you just find uh, <laughs> anywhere. But um, they found this one in England, and it had been used with the Brazilian Army after World War II. And um, this one was one of the fifteen thousand two hundred twenty-four made in Berwick, and. What came to me was I had been in touch at the time with the Stuart Tank Memorial Association and I asked them, I was like, hey, would you be interested in having a World War II event? Because I had planned World War II events before and they're like, definitely, sure. So um, I ended up, you know, just kicking it off for them. And I'm thinking like, you know, maybe I'll do one year, see how it goes. And you know, if it becomes a hit, maybe I'll stick around or maybe I'll pass it off. We'll see how it goes. Um, we got through our first year and um, it, it was something that really piqued the interest of people within the Berwick community. And by the time the second year rolled around, they're realizing, okay, there's a Stuart tank, there's a, an event going on and it's free. <laughs> so we kind of, you know, we go into our second year and um, we ended up getting a lot more support from the Berwick community and Columbia County in general, just saying like, oh my goodness, I had a family member who worked in the ACF plant. Um, I know someone who had, they used to paint the Stewart tanks or they test drove the yeah. Stewart tanks. And you know, like one thing led to another that we really gained so much momentum within the community. So. Yeah, my, my dad, I think I told you, worked part-time in that factory yeah. during World War II. And, and uh, rather than just throwing the initials out and assuming you know, the ACNF factory in Berwick, the American Car and Foundry plant, I gather they made railroad cars prior to uh, World yep, War II. They made railroad cars um, during World War II. They switched to Stuart tanks. They made bulldozers as well. Um, so they they produced a bunch of different things during sure. the time. W when is this year's event? So this year's event is Saturday and Sunday, July 20th and 21st. It, it's from 10 to 5, both days. Um, it's rain or shine. Last year we had rain on Sunday and the show went on anyway. And uh, we actually had really, really great response last year um, from visitors. We had over 4,000 visitors come, wow. Wow. come out, even in the rain. Yeah. And, um, and I think, uh, I, I indicated, I think this year it's especially important and may attract even more interest because of all the publicity, all the remembrance yeah. of D-Day, which 75 years ago, 
this year, D-Day was, uh, was held, and, and now it's, it's remembered uh, this year so much. And I think that's going to draw extra attention to it. But so the public knows that when they're coming to Berwick, uh, they're not just going to come to see a tank sitting there. And, and it's impressive to see something from World War II that was you know, still in existence in there. What kinds of things will they see? So this event is basically an overview of the World War II era. So when visitors come to the event, they're going to see um, military encampments, allied and axis. They're going to see home front displays. Um, people are going to, they're, they're going to get a glimpse into the lives of people who lived in Berwick um, and helped with rationing and the war effort in general. Uh, we also have weapons displays, weapons demos, we have battle scenarios. We have live music throughout the weekend as well. So on Saturday we have the Sunbury City Band joining us and we also have the Catawissa Military Band ah. coming as well. Um, so Saturday evening we always have our, our swing dance. <laughs> um, so this is our fourth year for our swing dance as well. So uh, it, we ended up moving it this year. So in past years, we were always at Reliance Fire Company, and they were so awesome, always sponsoring it for us. This year, we moved our swing dance to the Berwick YMCA on third, West 3rd Street. So we actually outgrew Reliance Fire <laughs> Company because oh. we've, we've had tremendous turnout at the, at the dance. Yeah, I mean, the dance is free as well. So, you know, a free event, free dance, you, you really can't go wrong. So our swing dance, um, all... It, the music is provided by um, Spirit of Swing. So they've been with us since year one when we first started this event and everyone loves their music. So we've been, we've been very fortunate to have been working with sure. them. So that's from six to nine on July 20th. Can you come and learn how to do this? Uh we have dance lessons at the event. Okay. Um, so at 2.30 A&M Ballroom Dance at Test Track Park, we'll be having uh, ballroom dance lessons that's, for that, everyone. That, they can great. learn to cut a rug and then they can come and join us at the YMCA. This dancing has sort of evolved over the years, uh, but it, swing is still a, it really still a popular did. form. But you know what? <laughs> There's so many people. It's what's so awesome about the swing dance is just having a bunch of people, even if they don't know how to swing dance, partner up with someone who does and just follow their moves. And it's it's awesome when you see everyone just dancing and swinging each other around and <laughs> the music and the the uniforms and the attire. We, yeah. we always encourage people to wear uniforms and attire from the World War II era if you're coming to the dance. It's not, it's not by no means an obligation, but it just really helps to and get to the that atmosphere. zeitgeist <laughs> the out there. Yeah, <laughs> so um, that's what happens on Saturday night. And then Sunday of the event, we really focus on our veterans. So the Marine Corps League Stuart Tank, Stuart Tank Detachment, they host um, a service for us. Just being able to honor all of the veterans, no matter what war they fought in, um, no matter what branch they served in, just being able to take the time and really um, honor the sacrifices and the service that they have to this country. So they, they always spearhead that effort for us just so we can remember why we're there. Sure. So we, we always do that on Sunday and we also have a Quilt of Valor presentation on Sunday as well. So this year we have two Navy veterans. It's actually a husband and a wife. Um, they weren't World War II veterans, but service is service and we're, we yes, definitely yeah. want, to, want to honor veterans. So they will be receiving their Quilts of Valor at the ceremony. Well, that, that's, so, that's wonderful. And again, you're honoring all service men and women. And yep. we have to remember that the reality of the situation is that while there's a lot of attention on World War II, what happened there, and the equipment that was, was employed and used, such as the, the Stuart tank, uh, that we're losing those veterans from World War II at an extremely alarmingly fast rate uh, right now. So uh, it, it's just uh, wonderful to be able to relive the era without the, without the violence, obviously, although there are reenactments there, and that's, uh, that's got to be pretty impressive. Yeah, and like I said, it's, it's an overview of the era, so we want people to kind of get a glimpse of what it was like on the war front. You know, you have your, your battles happening that um, you have your allies, your axis, just 
that confrontation. You know, we want people to be able to to glimpse that we mm -hmm. were um, just very fortunate that we have people who are willing to come to this event and take the time to learn about World War II in any capacity or anything um, at the event that is of interest to them. Sure. Um, again, July 20th. 20, 20, 20th and 21st. 20th and 21st. Yeah. <coughs> Pardon me. The location for most of the event uh, is very interesting as well because uh, you, you've used the term test track. Right. And I know that mm -hmm. there was an area uh, right near the Susquehanna River in Berwick. And by the way, this is very easy to find. Just go down Route 11, go south on Route 11 until you get to Berwick. And I think if you get, where's the, where's the turn? Was it so a, if you turn it south onto South Eaton Street. So there's a cemetery and there's Kmart. You turn onto South Eaton Street. Make a left at Kmart if you're heading south. Correct. And take you right to this test track. Now this, this track... Uh, was during World War II where they would take the tanks manufactured at the plant, bring them over and actually give them a run to make sure that everything was in, in working order. Uh, well, a lot has happened to that test track area. Perhaps you can describe it now. Yeah, I, today Test Track Park is a public park that um, it's just enjoyed by everyone. We we take over for the weekend. Um, so what is today soccer fields, that actually we remove all of the soccer goals and it becomes our encampment field. Oh, all right. Um, so there's been, I mean, Berwick Youth Football, they practice there and, you know, for just one weekend of the year, we, we throw it back into the World War II era. So um, what's interesting though this year is we did pick up momentum in regards to the number of Stuart tanks that we have at the event. So this year, uh, we're fortunate enough that we are working on the Stuart Tank Museum. And one of the things that's going to be housed in the Stuart Tank Museum is going to actually be an M3 Stuart Tank from the National Museum of the Marine Corps in Quantico, Virginia. Oh, wow. So the week of the event, we are sending some of our members down to Quantico, Virginia to pick up the tank so that it can be in attendance at the event. So in essence, we're going to have two Stuart tanks at the event this year. Wow. Now, uh, the museum, is that a work in progress? It is. It is. Um, we're hoping to have it complete at some time this year. Um, it's located on Vine Street in Berwick, so it's actually right next to the Berwick YMCA building. All right. Um, so this museum is... We're, we're working on having static displays that people can go in and learn about the ACF factory. They can learn about um, what home was like for people who lived in Berwick. They're able to go in and they're able to look at a Stuart tank, which is the one that we have on loan from the museum in Quantico. So it's just, it's really a building that's focusing on Berwick's war efforts. I know World there are a lot of photographs available from the plant yeah. Uh, during manufacturing uh, era, so that they certainly paint a picture of what it looked like, and you were they're trying to turn out as many tanks as possible because yeah. the war effort needed them. And that brings up another point, something you mentioned, I don't know if it was two years ago or, or, or last year when we had you in to talk about the event, that people do not realize. I, you know, I think, and, and, and forgive me for generalizing, but I fully believe that if people who don't live in Berwick, you know, Luzerne County, Lackawanna County, think about Berwick, they probably think about two things. Wise Potato Chips and the Berwick High School football team, because both have been in the headlines over the years, uh, you know, a great, great amount of time. Um, the ACNF plant, you know, no longer exists in the form of making railroad cars. Certainly doesn't exist in the terms of making Stewart tanks. But when it was making tanks, you told me that Berwick was a target for the access. Yeah. Um, so what's interesting is that's actually a little known fact that a lot of people don't realize is that by producing so many Stuart tanks for the war effort, Berwick was on Hitler's bomb list. So fortunately, that didn't happen. Um, but just realizing that Berwick was having such an impact that they were such a threat to Axis powers 
that's just an incredible thought to think about. It is, especially when you consider that just before the end of the war, uh, the Axis, specifically uh, Germany, was making great progress on the production of long-range rockets. Mm -hmm. And so that, you know, had that war gone on another year or two years, it would have been possible that uh, the United States and certainly the East Coast, uh, communities as far in as Berwick, could have very well been in, in reach of those, of those uh, missiles. Definitely, definitely. Um, it's just, you know, fortunately, the way that everything worked out, we didn't have to worry about Berwick actually being targeted um, and having something carried out with it. But I mean, just to, just to take note of how much of a threat Berwick was in its production. It's an incredible, it's an incredible impact that it had And a big check the mark for the community as to their, their value to, uh, to, to the yeah, war Yeah, I mean, think about Stuart Tanks and the aspect of as they're making Stuart Tanks and they're testing them and they're loading them onto railroad cars to send them off to war, those Stuart Tanks are getting sent to all continents of war. Yeah. So they were a major contribution to the war effort. And by virtue of where you found the one for Berwick, after the war as well, they were mm -hmm. used. Yeah, I mean, you, you think about the fact that um, after World War II, the, the M3A1 Stuart tank that we brought back to Berwick, it was used by Brazil. I mean, that, that's just something that's incredible to think about, you know, that a, a light tank like that, it's still, um, being utilized even though the war is over, but you know, it, it's yeah, definitely yeah. it's definitely something that um, was more of a help than a hindrance. Sure, sure. So. Now, when it comes to thinking about World War II, I think to myself, the war was on when I was born, and I, I was born in 1942, so the war was, was on. Um, you probably were born a couple years after that. Yeah, just a few. You know, 10, 15, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever. What prompted all your interest in this? I was first interested in World War II because of my grandfather. My grandfather was in World War II. He was part of the Army um, Corps of Engineers. Oh, okay. So one of his jobs was when they were going into new territory, building bridges, once all the troops passed through, destroying the bridges. Um, he he served in World War II in Korea, um, and I remember growing up, he used to tell me stories about his service in the Army. And unfortunately, being so young, I never really listened to his stories or comprehended what he was talking about, because it, it just seemed so long ago, and just at the time, I wasn't interested in it. But the older I got, the more I realized he was a significant part of history. I mean, that's something that I never learned about in high school. I never learned about World War II. So really it was something that I needed to pick up and run with it if I wanted to learn about anything that he did. You know, so I was fortunate enough that um, being older and having the a, a family that really wanted me to um, be involved in history and pursue my interests, you know, I was able to start working at a museum and I, I started volunteering at a museum and I was fortunate enough as well to start working there and my job was to run their events. Oh, right. And in doing that, I would run Civil War events and I would run World War II, World War II events, excuse me. And I just genuinely fell in love with learning about World War II. And one thing led to another to get a better understanding of what service was like during World War II, what things should look like, how, like, which um, military branches would be positioned where, were they ETO or PTO during, <laughs> during the war. Um, just to get a better understanding and layout, I became a reenactor as well. So um, I travel all over and I attend World War II events as well. And it's just, in everything I do, even if I'm not portraying an army nurse, if I'm doing a Navy wave impression or a Women's Marine Corps or a Women's Ordnance Worker, it's all just reflected back on the fact that my grandfather first sparked my interest in that, all that, of this. That's, that's, that's wonderful. It really yeah. is. And I think we've seen um, 
the Civil War reenactments have become very popular mm -hmm. uh, throughout the country. But I think maybe especially here in Pennsylvania, maybe because of Gettysburg, I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but now we see something like this. And we've often said on this program that it's, it's, all, it's one thing to read about things in a textbook, uh, but it's another to actually see them in action so that you know, whether, whether you had a father or a grandfather that served during World War II, uh, whether you're just interested in the excitement, uh, uh, the adventure, because it, uh, as terrible as it was, there was a certain amount of adventure that uh, in, involved. Definitely. And you can see that, you can pick up on that with these activities, especially if you have the, uh, you know, the battle reenactments. Yeah, and I mean, quite frankly, there's people that specifically go to see the weaponry of the era. There's people that go because they want to listen to the music of the era. They enjoy big band music and they want to be there and hear that. Um, they might be interested in vintage fashion, you know. There's so many different aspects just pulled together at an event like this. And that's why I genuinely just enjoy it because seeing it, hearing it, you you really get a sense of just getting a better understanding of the era. You feel and like you're there. Exactly. And I mean, for something that happened over 70 years ago, you know, it's it's really something that you can tell a story about it. You can read it in a book. But I have to say a lot of generations today just don't understand it until they actually go to well, an Well, you like mentioned this. that you didn't learn about it in school. No. Uh, and curriculums have changed so much that I don't know that much is studied about World War II, and yet virtually everyone has had a family member that served at yep. that time. Uh, again, my dad worked at the plant because you had, if you weren't actually in the service, you were, <clears throat> pardon me, expected where possible to have a service-related job, Correct, and in yeah. this case, working in ac &F. So if you go down to the event, 20th and 21st, right? Correct. And it's at the Berwick Test Track. You head down Route 11 if you're coming from Scranton or Wilkes-Barre area, and uh, turn at the Kmart. Turn left at the Kmart Onto if you're heading South that Street. way. Yep. Head right over to the Test Track. Something you mentioned, I don't want to just skim right over it, is that you won't find a ticket booth there. No, you're not going to find a ticket booth. <laughs> this is a free event. This is something that we truly just want to focus on celebrating Berwick's contributions to the war effort. So we're fortunate enough that with so much support within the community, we have sponsors. So um, they, they really make all this possible for us, other than having the reenactors make it possible for us as well. I mean, a lot of money does go into an event like this. Oh, and, sure. And the Stewart Tank Association is a nonprofit. So um, if we didn't have the sponsorships, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing. So yeah. um, just just very fortunate. And we do encourage people, if you, if you come to the event and you enjoy what you're seeing, please feel free to make a donation um, because the money that you're contributing during the event, that's helping us to create the Stuart Tank Memorial Museum. That's helping us to create a um, outside memorial so we can, outside where the ACF right. was, um, so we can honor people who work there. You know, the, those contributions are going right back into the community so we can help to educate more people about what what happened in Berwick during World War II. Plenty to see there. A lot of show and tell. Now, you brought a, a helmet along here. If we can yep. take a look at that real quick. <laughs> this is a, a, a typical World War II battle helmet. Yeah, this is one that I actually use when I go to events, when I do my Army nurse impression. So um, a lot of people think that, oh, just men had helmets like this, but that's not true. Army nurses had them too. And, you know, when you, met, you talked about D-Day, Army nurses came on um, one of the later waves onto um, the beaches. And you don't they, think about that, yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> you have to think about the fact women, when they first started in World War II, a lot of them that were out in the fields were issued men's clothing before they were issued women's size clothing. So, I mean, same helmet, men or man or woman would have a helmet like this. So I'm, I'm glad you brought. I, mean, I know, realize you couldn't bring the tank. Yeah, so well, <laughs> it's hard it to get in our door. Fit in my man. car. So. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, we want to encourage all of you to uh, to get down to the Berwick World War II days. Uh, I commend you so much for being so much individually behind this, because I think that's the kind of spark you need 
to keep it going. Uh, and one thing before we go, you know, I do kind of kid you brought this along, yeah. but you did say there's a lot of weaponry and things, so I guess there's a lot available to show? There, There is. Uh, we demonstrate Allied and Axis weaponry. Um, obviously, they'll see the um, battles happening, but when you come, you're going to see tons of military vehicles there. We always take them out on convoys throughout Berwick, so you probably see us one way or another in the community as well. But um, we set up tents just as though we're on the war front. So there's, there's a lot to see, and we always let spectators come in and see what it looks like inside of the tents because everything you're going to see inside the tents is going to be set up just like how uh, soldiers on the war front would have had them. Yeah, so. a great event, and I wish you, you know, continued luck with it because Thank obviously so it's growing, and I suspect uh, it's going to grow even more, especially if you're blessed with some good weather. Hopefully, definitely, hopefully that'll be the <laughs> well, case. Well, I ordered good weather, so let's, thank you let's so much for it. joining us, <laughs> and good you. luck with the the project. Uh, Mark McGlory, thank you so much for your uh, video work on our program. I'm David DeCosmo for ECTV Live. Until we see you again next week, here's hoping all your news is good.